Good afternoon, everybody. I'm making this video to give you some help with completing the measuring uh, the acceleration due to gravity using the cell phone videos. Um, this video is to help those who have trouble, uh, mainly because if they don't have Microsoft Excel, how, uh, how you can make the graphs just using free open source uh, Google uh, spreadsheet um, type way. So all you really need is a Google account, which doesn't cost you anything. Um, and you should be able to do the, gra the lab um, just with uh, this data and uh, Google Docs. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you need to go to Edmodo and then you need to go to where the data is posted on one of the posts that I put up. And then you should see an icon that says download file. So you can click on that icon and it should download it to whatever your default download location is. So then you would click on the up arrow, go to where it says show in folder if this is a Windows system. Uh, if it's an Apple system, it, you might have to search around a little bit to figure it out. Um, once you've got your measuring acceleration due to gravity data as a spreadsheet, you can go to Google Drive, right? And you can take that spreadsheet and drop it right into your Google Drive. Right, so when you put it, it should uh, download, and then you should be able just to find it, right? So we'll click on that in the uh, thing, and now we have it in a Google Drive. From Google Drive, uh, you want to open this thing. So if you go on the top, it says Open With, and you want to use Google Sheets. Google Sheets connects directly with your drive and it acts as the free version of um, Excel for Google, right? So uh, as you can see, this is the model data that I posted the other uh, day. So now what we can do is we can make the graphs. <clears throat> so to make the graphs, um, it's a lot to do it all in one sheet. So what I might do is go down to where it says sheet two and I might have a separate sheet for each trial. It'll make it easier to keep track of the different um, graphs. So I'm going to name that sheet trial one. I'm going to take all the data that's in trial one. So I'm going to highlight everything, all of the data. I'm going to right click, copy the data, go to trial one and just paste the data one more time, right? So now the data is here over to there, all right? So in this lab, you need to create two graphs for each trial. You need to create a time versus position graph and a time versus velocity graph. Um, to make a graph, the easiest way to do it is highlight both columns and drag all the way down, highlighting all the data that's involved. Then you want to go up to where it says insert, and then you want to go to chart. Now they're going to get recommend some default chart. Now this is not right because it's a it's a smooth curve. It doesn't really represent all the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to where it says chart types, and we're going to scroll down until we find scatter plot, right? And it's all of that data. It's it's a lot. Um, and then we want to try to maybe customize it a little bit, make it a little nicer. We'll go to um, customizations. Right, so in the what our, our title is going to be uh, trial one position versus time. Right, fonts fine, backgrounds fine, maximize is fine, the axes horizontal. We'll call that time, and the unit is seconds. Um, we might want to put some, no, we're okay with the labels. Some minor grid lines are nice. You can put in some minor grid lines on the horizontal axis. Uh, number format is fine. Um, point sizes, data, error bars. We don't even really need a trend line in this case. All right, so that's the horizontal axis. Let's look at the vertical axis. We want the vertical axis to be position. Right, so you have to click on this down arrow to switch. And the position is going to be measured in meters. Right? The labels are fine. We could add those minor grid lines in to make it a nice little grid like that. Right? So we know that the position is Y. And it makes sense. Right Down here, the slope is really shallow. So it's like when the ball first drops. Right, it doesn't have very much slope. But as it goes down, the slope increases 
indicating an increase in velocity, which is to be expected since it's falling. All right, trial one, position versus time graph. Just hit insert. And hopefully, there you are, right? There's your uh, graph number one. You should be able to copy it, or there's probably ways to, you could download these things a couple of different ways, right? Uh, for the next one, we want a velocity versus time graph. So what we're going to do, um, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but the simplest way might be, we're going to take all this data, that's our velocity data, and I might just insert, put put uh, another copy of the time data next to it so that I'd have X and Y, right? So what I mean is I'm going to insert to the left a space, right? So empty out a column between these two columns, right? And I'm going to take this data, that trial data, the time data, I'm going to copy it and make a second copy right next to the first one. Paste, right? Nothing fancy, just made a second copy, right? Now, if I want a graph of time and velocity in the y direction, we can highlight all that data, right? 109 data points. I mean, imagine if you had to manually graph this, this would take forever. Right? But all we got to do is go to insert, then to chart. Again, we want a scatter plot as our chart type. A little ugly, but that's okay. It's not perfect. Because um, this could be from, you know, if someone's hand was shaking or there was anything along those lines, that could make this not as good as we would like. But it's good enough, hopefully, if our slope looks good. Um, and then what we want to do is we're going to go to customization and do all that other stuff we need, right? So this is trial one, velocity versus time, and fonts are fine, all that kind of stuff. We want to title this as time in seconds on the horizontal. Um, the vertical is going to be velocity in meters per second. Add in those extra grid lines, right? Go back to the horizontal, put the grid lines in. That's so a nice little grid to go with our data. Uh, and notice in this particular data set, it's a downward slope because we didn't we didn't rotate our axis in the tracker program. So this just means that since down was negative, the velocity is increasing in the downward direction as ex expected if you're you know falling you know from a drop. Now the tricky part here is we want we need the slope of this line, right? That's like the most important part because we the slope of velocity versus time graph, right, will tell us our acceleration, which is the whole point of this lab. So to find the slope, we need to know the equation of the line. Now you could, I guess, manually print this off and then try to I don't know, use a ruler and do something along those lines, um, but. Even this uh, free version that Google has, if you go to the bottom, there's this idea that says trend line, right? So you want to put a trend line, you want a linear trend line, and there it is. There's the trend line. Now, to get this slope, I mean, you can mouse over it. It has, says it right there. But if you scroll down a little bit, the label, you can make the label for the trend line to show the equation, right? And now we can see the equation that represents this trend line. Um, do we need R squared? No, we don't need that. Line thickness is fine. Uh, and then we can insert that graph. And so now, right, we've got one graph that's trial one velocity versus time, second graph trial one position versus time, right? And these are the two graphs needed for that trial, right? Super straightforward, it didn't take that long to do. Now, if we want to figure out the percent error, right, we, from the lab, it said the expected percent, expected value is 9.8, oh, 9.8, is what they, we expect in New York, approximately, right? 9.81, 9.03, 9.803 is a model that's predicted. Um, so to check the percent error, right, we know that the slope of this line in this case, negative 9.526, that is the average of all of this data in terms of the uh, acceleration. So the, so our, our predicted, predicted, our measured, that value is 
five, two, six. The negative doesn't matter in here because we're just comparing the magnitudes between the two things, right? So if we want to find the percent, right? Uh, there's a there's a way to do it using a spreadsheet. So whenever you want to do math in a spreadsheet, first you put an equal sign, right? And then you tell the, the computer what operations you want to do. So what I want to do is I want to take um, this value, right? The final, the measured value. I'm going to subtract the predicted value from it. Put that in brackets. And then I'm going to divide that, the difference between these two, and I'm going to divide it by what it should be, the predicted value, right? And then last but not least, I'll put brackets around all of that, and then times this by 100 to turn it into a percent. So in this case, our percent error is negative 2.82 or 83%, which is excellent. That's really good. Uh, for percent error. So if you're in this realm, uh, your percent error is good, um, the values are good, and you should have a good job at the lab. What you would do at the end, uh, you want to do this three more times, and then um, average the acceleration, and you'll be good to go. So I hope this helps, and uh, feel free to email me if you're having trouble with anything, miller.physics at gmail.com.